First of all, hands up if you ever met someone diagnosed with trisomy 18. Oh, that's pretty good. Well, after today, you can all put your hands up because I have been diagnosed with mosaic trisomy 18. 70% of my cells have an extra chromosome. Still working on this speech. <laughs> Sometimes you might hear that we don't have personalities. Trust me, we all have personalities. Just ask any trisomy parent, 2 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> So my objectives are for today are share my journey with Mosaic Trisomy 18, examine a different perspective, and provide recommendations. So when my mom was pregnant, I stopped growing, so my obstetrician carefully watched me. I was born six weeks early by C-section at two pounds and 12 ounces. I guess none of my diapers or sleepers fit, so my mom had to dress me up in doll, uh, Cabbage Patch doll clothing. <laughs> Thank goodness I, don't, I can't fit in this anymore. That'd be kind of freaky. <laughs> I was able to breathe on my own and my heart was fine, so I was mainly there to keep warm and gain weight. One of the struggles I had when I was little was that it was really hard for me to be fed. I wasn't very good at being able to nurse. It would take me over an hour to drink 10 mils of milk from the bottle. A number of times I would just go wash food to save a lot of energy. It took me a long time to gain weight and grow. I guess my mom did the happy dance when I finally made it onto the growth charts. It continued to be a big struggle for me when I got older. Different textures of food didn't agree with me. My mom spent half the time Rushing me to the bathroom. 50% of the time, she made it. <laughs> now I'm able to eat most foods, and mom has to bar the fridge. <laughs> because I'm just a regular teenager in the food department. At eight months old, I wasn't meeting the normal milestones, such as holding up my head, so I was sent for genetic testing. At 14 months old, I was diagnosed with mosaic trisomy 18. I had a lot of different tests for my heart, hearing, lungs, eyes, and many other things. Mark and all of my organs were normal. I started intervention programs from the outpatient department at the university. I also attended many programs at the Glen Rose for speech, OT and PT from there. I was in early ed programs such as the Robin Hood, the Dross and Reach program, and then the Neo, uh, Neuro Developmental programs. I spent a lot of time in my childhood driving back and forth, back and forth to appointments. I feel sorry for my mom. She had to do a lot of driving. <laughs> Skills came slow to me. I hated being in a crawling position, so I used to do a log roll. I was so fast, I rolled down the stairs twice. <laughs> I finally learned how to walk after my second birthday and then crawled after that. It took me longer to speak, and I was delayed at my large and fine motor skills. I had a lot of sensory issues when I was younger. For example, the tag of the back of my neck had to be cut because it was very itchy. My socks had to be inside out or feel like mosquito bites attacking me. Wounds and such as fireworks had to, I couldn't be around because it felt like a nuclear explosion inside my head. And bath water, well, it had to be cold or it felt like an electric shock. My ear was very sensitive when I got a haircut, so it was a tough time for the hairdressers. I feel sorry for them. Not a problem anymore, though, thank goodness. And, well, eating. Um, most of those issues have been resolved, so... Thank you for that. But I'm still working on the fireworks. <laughs> and I was tested, and the results showed that I had a 58 IQ. I was also diagnosed with ADD. So if I mess up today, I can always blame it on my ADD. <laughs> the combination of everything made learning really hard for me. 
Just to learn to print the letters of the alphabet took forever. I would have to work after stroke after stroke. And my mom was there to help me. She had no choice. She had to help me. <laughs> my eyes were teeming like a tear, so it was really hard for me to read. I would look down, but then I would have to look up for a way. I did a lot of eye exercises and I wore a patch over my stronger eye. When I read the words from one sentence, it would get mixed up with another sentence. Now I'm happy to say I'm a reading maniac, and my mom has to tell me to go to bed because I'm just reading till like the wee hours in the morning. School's gonna put me on a regular grade one class with no way they said they knew I wouldn't make it. I was just one of those kids who fell through the cracks. Because of that, I ended up being homeschooled. I wasn't very coordinated, and socially I was different than kids my age. This led to bullying issues and kids not letting me join in what they were doing, such as basketball or soccer. I would invite kids to my birthday parties, but I wouldn't get invited back. It was really hard. Because I was different, I was different. Kids used to laugh at me and whisper behind my back saying such things as, Hey, retard, or you reject. I would sometimes just put a smile on my face and pretend it didn't hurt inside. It felt my heart was about to burst. I'm happy that I have good friends now. I'm glad that part of my life is over. So how does this affect me? Now, well, areas such as spelling is difficult. That's why I'm so thankful for texting, where the word just magically pop up. <laughs> <laughs> Problem solving and counting money, well, let's just say sometimes I feel like they're from another planet. I need to... Uh, it's really hard for me if people talk too fast or give me too much information. I need to have things broken down to smaller steps. So that I can understand, if you come and talk to me after this presentation, and you see me smiling on my head, there are two possibilities. Number one, I really like what you're saying. Or number two, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. <laughs> Do I enjoy having Mosaic try so many team? Very honestly, no. But I guess there are things in all our lives that we might not like. Maybe it's the way we look, or what we think we don't have. We can choose to look at the negative, or be thankful for what we do have. Parts of my journey with Mosaic Trisomy Team was watching a video called The World of a Child with Trisomy. It showed many stories of Trisomy Teen children who couldn't receive medical treatment because of their diagnosis. A DNR were put on their children's file without the parents' knowledge or consent. Simple things such as oxygen was refused. And I have to say I was pretty shocked. From my point of view, that is just like refusing treatment to someone because of their age, race, or sexual orientation. Genetic discrimination is deadly. We all deserve a chance at life. I found that 84.5% of obstetricians consider trisomy teen to be a, a lethal abnormality. I started a Facebook page and the website and heard many heartbreaking stories from parents from around the world. Okay. I don't know if all the slides are right, so... Yep, keep going. They are? Okay. Mm -hmm. So just read the bottom one from there. Right. Some infants with trisomy teen mosaicism have manifest some very limited degree of personality development. The oldest surviving persons with the condition have reached the second decade of life while too fit, unresponsibly bedridden, and were even currently treated for infections. I will not even comment. In 1949, life expectancy for someone with Down syndrome was between 8 to 12 years old. In 2016, it is up to 55 years. Why? One of the reasons is the medical interventions are given to trisomy 21 patients in a report by Jean V and others. One year of survival rates for trisomy teen children with full intervention was 53%, and children who are alive at one year. 91% were alive at five years. We asked some trisomy parents what they would like to share with you today. A number of parents felt like some people in the medical community uses phrases like no quality of life, 
or we live a life of suffering, is giving no hope to parents. Yet many parents see things very differently. As this research shows, 332 families participated in this survey. So my happy is a child happy, 90% agree. My child enriches our family, 84% agree. Effect on my marriage and relationship was 75% positive. And I, uh, I'll just read the last two here. I feel some of the providers don't look beyond the grim statistics of trisomy 13 or 18. 84% agree, and if I was pregnant, again with the trisomy 13 or 18 pregnancy, I would continue in 91% agree, and said unsure, and two said no, so. In different articles about trisomy teen textbooks, pictures like this are being used. Would these pictures affect how parents or medical staff might see trisomy teen children? At the end of July, I was the keynote speaker at the annual SOFT conference in Tacoma, Washington. For those who aren't familiar with SOFT, it stands for Support Organization for Trisomy. The children I saw didn't, there didn't look like the pictures we just saw. They looked like this, and no, only a few were mosaic. I saw kids smiling, interacting with their parents. I saw parents laughing with their kids and having fun together. I saw brothers and sisters showing empathy and respect. If you ever get the chance, I would highly recommend to go in one of their conferences. Interacting with kids and their parents is definitely a great way to learn more about Trisomy Teen. Since you can't make it to a conference, I would like to introduce you to some of the Trisomy children and their journeys. Here are some older adults and children who are diagnosed with full Trisomy 18. As you can see there, 36. 35 and 26, etc. Usually in research, you don't hear much about the older adults in, with full trisomy. Uh, here are some of the mosaic kids. As you can see, they're all different. Full trisomy. Full trisomy. <coughs> Just read the slides. Oh, yeah. Even though our journey with Janessa is challenging, we are very thankful for our daughter. She is a treasure. It's my job to ignore her trisomy team and fix her heart. And this is Adeline after her open heart surgery. She probably won't grow up to be president of the United States. She probably might not live to be 70, but that doesn't mean she does not have a life to live. Simon is everything I never knew. I always want, and no one has taught me more about living than he has. And so these are some of the mosaic, trisomy, uh, mosaic kids. As you can see, we're all different. So these are just some of their stories. Start planning her funeral so that when she dies, you won't have to worry about planning and you can focus on other things. And so this is Vanessa after her heart repair at two months. Had we known her heart diagnosis, we would not have operated on her. And what you look like is not who you are. Your genes tell us you are disabled. Really? Don't put limitations on Olivia just because she has this diagnosis doesn't mean it is a death sentence. And this is a quote by a doctor. And so these are some of the partial trisomy kids. And when I was younger, I stood in Janessa's office when my mom asked how she would advise her. She said abortion because of statistics. The one thing about statistics is they might tell you what could happen, but they definitely cannot tell you what will happen. I'm living proof of that. I like to end with these recommendations, which are modified from 2013 study. Our children are not a diagnosis. Let's get rid of the labels uh, lethal anomaly and incompatible with life. What are they supposed to mean anyhow? Did children that I just showed you look like they were incompatible with life? Parents just have to go to Facebook and see that isn't true. Yes, they might have life limiting conditions but they are definitely not incompatible with life. History shows that by using the word lethal, you will continue to get re lethal results. Please treat symptoms and not the labels. Just like all children you saw there were different, so are their needs. Trisomy teen is not a rubber stamp disorder. Provide balanced information to parents. Parents feel that 
lives are valuable no matter how long they live. Yes, the road might be difficult, but the road can also have great rewards and memories. Please share this side as well. Please be careful with these statements. This no quality of life is a judgmental statement. Remember that parents surveyed didn't feel the same way. In the best interest of the child. Unfortunately, this statement often gets used to suggest that the child can be better off dead. They will live a life of suffering. Parents surveyed would disagree that their children are living a life of suffering. Medical staff are great, but even they can't predict the future. And there is nothing we can do. You can actually do a lot. Be supportive, empathetic, help parents find resources and appropriate medical care. Connect them with a support network of other families who are further along in their journeys. Use the child's name if there's one. Families will be looking to you. I include some resources that might be helpful. I have also brought these two ebooks, which are free online. One is Care of the Infant, Child with Trisomy 13 or Trisomy 18 from the Soft. It tells you you need to watch out for growth charts, stages and milestones, registry for cardiac surgeries, and a lot more. Their website includes different surgeries that children were went through and many stories from families. The others from the International Trisomy Alliance is geared toward parents who continue their pregnancy. The website will give you the latest trisomy research. Research and statistics are extremely important, and I'm very thankful for them. We wouldn't be where we are without them. However, I believe that sometimes we need to move beyond statistics to fully grasp the entire picture. I truly hope that through my story and pictures and stories of other trisomy teen children, I have allowed you to see another side of this diagnosis. When you meet a child with trisomy teen, understand that challenges may exist, but so do hope and possibility. And here is my contact information if there are any other questions. Um, thank you all for coming. Uh, thank you, friend. Um, great way to start off the season. Any questions from the outside sites to start with? Questions from the audience? For any but. Okay. Um, I think that probably means uh, Brandon succeeded in a great amount of food for thought for all of us. So thank you very much. <laughs>